Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 279. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're going to discuss gravity <laughs> in honor of its release. This is the return. That was gravity kicking in, in case you didn't know. <laughs> we were in zero gravity when we started, and now we're... <laughs> Okay, um, yeah. we're done with that. We're done with that. Uh, we'll fix that in post. This is the return <laughs> of Alfonso Cuaron mm-hmm. to the world of directing. Yes. Um, what, is it Children of Men, the last Children one Children of Men, Because then the third, 2006. Yeah, because the third Harry Potter was before that, correct? Yep. Yeah. It was, uh, let's see, Children of Men, 2006, Harry Potter in 2004. Ah, uh, yes. E2, Mama Tambien, oh, 2001. That's right. I, I forget I, that even was if you for were some think, bizarre reason. I can't believe this, but I, I forgot that Great Expectations... The Ethan Hawke one Whoa, was with before the, that. Uma Thurman? Yeah. Wow. He directed that? Or was it Gwyneth Paltrow or Uma Thurman? Oh, yeah. I think you might be right. Gwyneth yeah. Paltrow. Yeah. Um, but, be, yeah, before, yeah, he directed huh. that before he even did E2 huh. Mama Tambien, hmm. which is crazy to think about. Yeah. Who knows? Um, obviously, a big favorite around the MacGuffin. We love Children of Men, one oh, of yeah. the best sci fi films of the last. I don't know, 20 years or something, yeah, whatever you want, yeah. ever. Yeah, it's, it's, whatever. It's, it's definitely in the list. It's, yeah. it's got all the good elements, in, including its amazingly beautiful film. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things that I think he's bringing to this movie big time. Those yes. the cinematography, the long shots, Which, the dramatic scenes, tension. So Oof. for those who are unaware, Gravity is the story of a uh, medical engineer and an astronaut who are working together to survive um, after there's a collision in space, which mm-hmm. destroys their spacecraft. And yes. Puts them in oh. a perilous situation. Oh, just yeah. no. Ugh. And they make yeah. a big deal of really building on the, you know, in space there's no one no can hear scream. scream. Yeah. Was it Aliens or somebody? Yeah, I think really it was yeah, a- the first Alien movie. Yeah. In fact, that was actually the thing that impressed me the most when I started looking into this film because my biggest initial gripe from the trailer was all the sound explosions mm-hmm. in space, but I didn't realize that the film itself is scientifically accurate and depicting no sound in space, but they put sound effects in the film trailer to make it appear more exciting. Yeah, I was I was always sort of wondering about that before this film was made. Um because you know, got all this talk about like how amazingly accurate and, and detailed and like it and like it well, actually would be, but, and I mean, I'm like, and then they have explosions. So. Like it's what the hell? it's sort of an interesting concept. I've, I I will say I've seen it at mm, this point, that's right. so I can speak from someone who's seen guy. it. But um, there there are a few things that were sort of curious about me. A you know just sort of space as a background for a film, but yeah. also like in essence, this film has two characters. Yeah. Like, I mean, Sandra Bullock and George Clooney yep. are the only characters. There's, I think, four other characters in some capacity in the movie. Okay. But you never see them. Okay, like, they're more like, voiceover or yeah. very small snippets. No, I mean, oh, literally. literally just voiceover? Yeah. Like, wow. There, there's one other astronaut who you see in the background, but I don't hmm. think you ever see him close up. Wow. Like, until Dang. you see him Dedication later. to a story. Yeah. Which, I mean, which is one of the things I thought was funny, because, you know, Ed Harris's Mission Control. You know that was a shout-out to Hal Paul 13. You know yeah. that's true. Yeah. But, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah I mean, it's, it's like, this is two characters in space for an entire movie. And I was like, oh, no, that seems like a tough, mm. tough storyline to fill an entire plot on with just two actors yeah. in space. Yeah. I mean, it's sort of like you think about all these other films like, um, was it Buried? Yeah, oh, yeah. Passed Away or uh-huh. whatever. And it's like, it is very challenging to yes. make an entire film with very little material. Yeah, the, yeah, you get to a point where you're wondering how much you're stretching or creating new things just to keep it going. But I, I mean, I, I won't say that that isn't necessarily true. I mean, I, I the film is 90 minutes long, and wow. even that feels... Like, it's been stretched hmm. some to me. Interesting. Um, in terms of just, like, stretching out the content to make it last a little longer. Hmm. Not saying it's a good or bad thing for the film, necessarily. It's just kind of w- the reality of the, of right. the film. It's just, like, there's only so much material you have. And, you know, an average film is, like, at least 90 minutes long. Yeah. So I'm glad that it's not, like... You know, like two and a half hours, and they had to cut a bunch of stuff because yeah. it was yeah, so there's overly enough long. Like, two and a half hour long space movies. You no, and that's, that what I, that, that, and that's what I appreciate. Considering, <laughs> hey, uh, considering it's like you know, Alphonse Cuarón so much with the like long shot and building tension. It seemed to me like one of those things that I wouldn't have been surprised if this was not an, a short film. Yeah. Not that it would be overly long, but I, you know, which nowadays it's like two hours. It almost seems unheard of to see movies that are un, under I mean, two hours nowadays. Like, it's, I mean, the film is harrowing. You know, these people mm. are going through a very challenging situation. I mean, you're like, you're in space. Um, satellites are blowing up. Mm-hmm. There's communications that are going down, so they can't even communicate with the ground. Oh, it's God. just the two of them. Ugh. It's isolation. You know, there's definitely challenging things, um, but. Just as much, I would say it's fair to describe as an action movie. Hmm. Like, there are a lot of explosions. There's a lot of, like, um, 
crazy effects mm-hmm. and stuff like that. You know, it's I mean, which is a very big part in terms of the filming of the movie because this he had the idea as far back as. 2006 with yep. like children and men. Yep. But because of you know the logistics of filming mm-hmm. it, uh, they had a whole idea to like do it all with practical and then digitize everything, yeah. and it was getting really really complicated really fast and not looking as good as they wanted it. Yeah, they actually said it was development hell for about four years. Uh, because the cinematography, visual effects, and the realistic story atmosphere of outer space proceeded to be too challenging, and Coron had to wait for the technology to be more advanced and progress to meet his visions, which was finally realized in 2009 with James Cameron's Avatar. Everybody loves James Cameron. You know, it's, it's one of those things, it's kind of like, as much as they sucked when Star Wars prequels came out, it was like, oh, I guess you can really do digital film, and it actually has some advantages. But, and the similar thing happened with Avatar, where it's like, not even oh, just that, right. James Cameron, just like, I mean, he created so much technology oh, for yeah. that film. I mean, that's why that film took so long to come out. So, I mean, it seems only appropriate mm-hmm. that a lot of people have capitalized on his yes. uh, success and... yeah creativity and whatnot. And as you're saying, you know, it's since as far back as 2006 when he's working at Universal on Children of Men, uh, Koron had ideas for it, and he, uh, Universal originally hoped to attach Angelina Jolie, but decided that the project would be too expensive originally, and they put it kind of into the holding pattern. And then Warner Brothers pick it up, and then Koron cast Sandra Bullock and Robert Downey Jr., in late 2010 for the leads, but then Downey had to drop out because of scheduling conflicts and was replaced with Clooney. I mean, it's actually surprising how low on the totem Bullock was. I mean, Jolie turned it down twice. Mm-hmm. They tried to get Natalie Portman. That's she right, got yeah. pregnant. Mm-hmm. There's a whole slew of other people. I remember Olivia Wilde. I forget mm-hmm. who else they, they were auditioning yeah. for the role, but sort of like, you would think somebody who's won an Academy Award, who's a pretty talented actress, who's done action, who's done pretty yeah. much everything under the sun would be more interested <laughs> but i mean i guess maybe they thought you know especially with the jolie budgetary concerns mm. that sandra bullock wouldn't necessarily be a more cost effective option yeah but it's, i mean i'd be curious with you know clooney and her being in it yeah what it ended up costing i mean yeah. i guess since there's only two people really in it, it i also be curious like if it's successful how what this will do for bullock because between this and the heat she's not had a horrible pretty year hot, considering. But don't <laughs> oh no <laughs> but no, I mean, it's good things for her because she kind of wallowed in nothingness there for a little bit with nothing but, like, miscongeniality in the, its sequel for yeah, really... Yeah, I mean, she had the blind side there, which yeah, that's got the true. Academy Award yeah, for, but, right. you know, she also had, was it all about Steve <laughs> same year, so Ugh. I think she was only the first person being nominated for a Razzie and an Academy Award <laughs> in the same year. Um, it's... It's. I mean, it's. So maybe, maybe that you know, maybe there was a little bit of more pick and choosy on her part. Maybe she was a little bit gun shy as to what she should pick. But I don't know. Yeah. But she's made some good choices this year so far. I'm really looking forward to Gravity. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely an interesting project. I thought it was really interesting also that Alfonso Cuarón uh, wrote it with his son. Really? Yeah, his son is. Uh, let's see, do I have it written down here? Uh, I think his name is like yeah, Jonas Cuarón. Hmm. Was wow. son, which I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, um, bringing the family into it. Yeah, but it, it's 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 sort of one of those like projects like Inception that's so conceptualized by one yes. person that they really have this vision of this project mm-hmm. that they want to do and the execution. I mean, Alfonso Cuarón has a reputation of being an amazing uh, director in terms of yes. ex- his execution. Children of Men just speaks to oh, God. how strong and powerful and creative uh-huh. he is in terms of coming up with. His uh, shot. And similar to, you know, you're talking about Inception with Nolan, he gets uh, Jonathan Nolan involved all the time because it's one of those things. It's like, like you're talking about, you have one person with a strong concept. You get to this point where maybe the only people they're willing to work with are people who aren't going to try to change it but instead work with them. And maybe sometimes family fits that role a little bit better where you're like, your son wants to help you, your brother wants to help you make it better rather than tweak it to their vision yeah. or something. I don't you know. know. It'll be interesting to see sort of as this gets towards the Oscar season, I mean, I've heard people already talking theoretically best picture hmm. contender. I'm not necessarily sold on that for sure, but it seems definitely to be in contention for visual effects. Mm. And mm-hmm. there's a possibility I could see Sandra Bullock being nominated, but I think it's a fairly strong year for actresses. So, nice. Yeah. Um, it's, it's possible. It'll be interesting to see. I'm curious to see what everyone else thinks of it. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, I'm glad that you enjoyed it since, uh, you know, you have a strong Rubicon for quality. 
That's, that's, I would that's, like to believe that's that. A, that's a compliment. It Don't is. give me that. Di- I'm not you, saying it's You had that look like, where's this going? I'm He's going to turn it into a snide remark. I, I'm not saying that. I'm saying like me. <laughs> yeah. me sh- I'm a I know, bear. I know you, the Obey apologist, is getting official credit for yeah. saying that you have a good uh, read on film quality. Yeah, so, so I'm looking forward to seeing it. I'm probably going to see it in the biggest screen possible. Yeah, to I would blow definitely my recommend that. IMAX, 3D, all that good mm-hmm, stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but. Uh, yeah, let us know what you think of it. If you're a fan of Alfonso Cuarón, oh. all that sort of stuff. At, Looking uh, forward to the long takes. The website. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can find us at MacGuffin. It's MacGuff.in. We're at MacGuffinCast on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, Facebook.com slash MacGuffin Podcast. Phone number 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes. Yep. Roku, mm-hmm. Blip.tv, uh, Miro. Check in and get glue. Get some stickers to put on your parents windshield or your own windshield if you don't like driving very well um <laughs> give yourself some stars or some star us some stars yeah, we want the stars not yeah, yourself yeah give yourself us whatever some yeah, stars on good. itunes and thumbs and comments on youtube and we will uh, see you next time yell at ya the Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.